Good afternoon. I'm Chris Moore, Dean of the College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences, Sargent College. It's my pleasure and great honor to welcome you to the 2021 Virtual Sargent College Commencement Ceremony. I've never been so excited to say congratulations, and there's rarely, if ever been, a graduating class more deserving of accolades than the class of 2021. I still remember your Sargent College Rose Banquet in 2017. A little bit of unfortunate planning had us all together immediately after a bunch of you had come out of your first chemistry exam. I'm really sorry about that. But COVID is another matter. Nobody warned us. No one could have warned us. And yet you've zoomed your way through it brilliantly. The resilience and habits of mind you were developing even back in 2017 served you well in this final stretch. Like your predecessors and now your fellow alumni, you thrived your way through the 8 a.m. classes, the all-nighters, through gross anatomy and epidemiology. What I hope for you is that despite the many horrors of the pandemic, you found your way to some of the silver linings of the COVID cloud. This transformative period has forever altered our sense of the world and redefined our notion of community. Our friends, colleagues, and collaborators are separated more now by time than by actual miles. We have each also had to titrate with excruciating precision, careful deliberation and thought, exactly how much we need to be with other people in real life. Our world's sudden devotion to sourdough and puppy adoptions is, after all, about ways to enhance our time together. Breaking bread is not a Zoom option. I hope that as the world transformed itself, you learned some fundamentals about yourself, your values, your needs, and ambitions. Even more than most grads, you know with certainty that you are capable of more than you thought, that you can thrive amidst daunting circumstances, and that you will, at the expense of your own interests, prioritize the safety and well-being of others. And through this experience, you have unavoidably come to grasp the complexity, the transience, and the mercurial nature of human health, along with its fundamental lack of fairness or certainty. It is only through your knowledge, your skills, and your commitment to health as a basic human right that we might counter the capriciousness of our afflictions. I know that you know this already. You've put yourselves right in the action throughout this pandemic. Even as our world was thrown into disarray, when we had far more scary questions than reassuring answers, you raised your hands to help. You volunteered as contact tracers, collected hard-to-find PPE, and countered new threats to people's food security. You devoted your time and talents at such places as the Dimmock Community Health Center, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and the Department of Transitional Assistance. Another silver lining is our enormously reinforced understanding of our Sargent community. Your professors have been tested beyond anyone's expectations. And they have met these insurmountable challenges with skill, tenacity, and calm. Their stories of sacrifice on your behalf are inspiring as they masterfully transform their courses to the Learn From Anywhere format in a few weeks and have continued in this very challenging teaching format since summer. Thanks to your faculty, you can be confident that you emerge fully prepared and ready for whatever is next. For them, though, COVID leaves in its wake lost scholarly opportunities, too many early mornings, too many missed dinners, and more than a few kids who have learned to put themselves to bed. So let's take a moment to thank your remarkable sergeant faculty for their devotion to your objectives and for their unshakable confidence in your ability to adapt as well. Without their commitment to you and to your success, none of us would be here celebrating today. One of your faculty leaders bears particular mention at this moment, especially with regard to all she has contributed to the success of Sargent students over the years. Wendy Coster, professor and chair of the Occupational Therapy Department, will be retiring this summer after 34 years at Sargent College. Dr. Coster has helped to perch the OT program at the pinnacle of all programs, number one in the nation for a lot of her time, for as long as many of us can remember. She's a former president of the American Occupational Therapy Association, 
and she's won nearly every award they offer, including the prestigious Slegel Lectureship. She was named one of the most influential people in occupational therapy's 100-year history. She's perhaps best known for her work describing the functional abilities of children with disabling conditions and has dedicated her career to ensuring access for all children and youth to full participation in their worlds. Thank you, Dr. Koster, for being such a great partner, for leading your department to such great heights, and for leading the way in occupational therapy education and practice. Don't worry, Dr. Koster leaves Sargent in the superb care of faculty like Professors Sullivan Soyden, Dunham, Heisline, and Boucher, as well as our new professor of health equity, we look forward to contributing even more to this work, which started all the way back at our founding in 1881. This year, we celebrate the 140th anniversary of Sargent College. The ability for every person to participate in their community fully, regardless of ability, was at the heart of Dudley Allen Sargent's ambitions for his new college in 1881. Dr. Sargent was a pioneer in the study of physical training and exercise. He was an innovator, an educator, and a researcher. He was almost a century ahead of his time, working toward participation for all, regardless of ability, gender, or race. He recognized that physical activity is the means for maintaining health and improving functional capacity for anyone, irrespective of ability. I'm immensely proud to be part of this legacy, but somewhat discouraged to be living through the gaping deficits in access to health services the disturbing magnitude of social determinants to a person's health status, and the disparate impact of COVID across socioeconomic divides. Your fellow alumnus, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. 2020 has laid bare the disturbing truth and magnitude of this disparity in our country. The grim statistics of the pandemic's impact on the health of people of color is the compounded result of systemic injustices for which solutions are long overdue. None of us, with our eyes opened wide by Sargent College's objective observation and understanding of the world, can accept a system where a person's future health is so powerfully influenced by such structural bias. Now, your intimate awareness of this fundamentally unfair situation brings with it new responsibilities that we don't get to choose to unsee. Be on the lookout for your own opportunities to mitigate these health inequities. If you're not sure where to start, consider a situation you're likely to, likely to encounter fairly soon. When you're on your next job interview or grad school visit, Confirm with your interviewer that their organization includes pro bono services among your anticipated activities. Some of you will work with government entities and professional associations where you may recognize opportunities to remove structural barriers to health equity. Be an advocate and a voice for those who are disenfranchised. Your knowledge of disability and social determinants of health means that you have already started this work. Recognizing these paths of action gives us hope. Hope that being a person of color won't mean being a person of reduced life expectancy. Hope that health is recognized as a human right, not as a privilege. And hope for the shared wisdom that population health is achieved through the health of each person. And it is you, class of 2021, that gives me this hope. You've chosen to devote your careers to transforming the health of our world, and you've given me every confidence to believe that this is exactly what you'll do. And whether your career choices take you to the clinic, the lab, the capital, the classroom, or the boardroom, your knowledge will guide you in addressing these daunting challenges. Your time at Sargent has prepared you well for what's ahead. You will become our first responders, the essential workers, the healthcare heroes of tomorrow. So thank you for becoming the change you wish to see. And as you go on to the next phase of your life's journey, know that you will always be a part of the Sargent College family. The relationships you've developed with your professors will deepen. You will soon be their colleagues and key parts of each other's professional networks. Be sure to let us hear from you now and then, and I hope you'll make it back to campus for our special events like Alumni Weekend and our Drench Lecture. Until we meet again, 
On behalf of your Sargent College faculty and staff, congratulations to the class of 2021. Each year, Sargent College awards the Whitney R. Powers Award for Teaching Excellence to recognize an outstanding teacher from among our faculty. The award is named in honor of Whitney R. Powers, Professor Emeritus of Sargent College and former chair of the Health Sciences Department, who for over 25 years exemplified our highest teaching ambitions. This year, we have asked the 2020 recipient of the Whitney R. Powers Award for Teaching Excellence to share some of her reflections on the last year with you. Professor Ann Escher is a clinical assistant professor of occupational therapy whose clinical practice covers the lifespan from working in the NICU and pediatrics at an acute care hospital to inpatient and home care rehabilitation for older adults with low vision. Ann's nominators praised her commitment to respecting students' diversity of experience and thought and creating an inclusive learning community, challenging students to consider multiple perspectives. Thank you, Dean Moore, for inviting me to make some remarks today. Welcome graduates, family and friends, Sargent College staff and faculty, and my dear colleagues, and all other guests. Here we are, finally. Well, at least here we are in this virtual space together. I am truly honored and excited to be able to mark this time of transition with you and to have this opportunity to congratulate you on your successful completion of your academic programs. Very well done. As Dean Moore noted, all of us have lived through a period of dramatic worldwide and national change that has altered history provided a level of challenge that many of us have not experienced before. We carry with us the pain, disappointment, and fear of these past years, while simultaneously holding tight to hope, compassion, and care for each other. I think my biggest message to you all is thank you. Thank you for supporting each other. Thank you for being flexible and resilient in the face of disappointments and disruptions to your expectations for your education. And thank you for being generous, kind, and understanding to each other, your faculty, and the BU community. Graduation is always a time of transition, but rarely does graduation coincide with the intense upheaval of 2020 and into 2021. During this time of transition, perhaps to a summer break, a clinical rotation, a job, or to graduate school, I encourage you to take some time to reflect and commit. What will you gladly let go of? Maybe Zoom birthday parties, for instance, or learn from anywhere? And what will you take with you intentionally into future years? What can we take away from this difficult period and continue to cultivate in our own lives? What skills did you build during these challenging times with differing levels of importance from how to use virtual backgrounds and touch-ups to effective stress management strategies that you will carry on with you to your next endeavors? For instance, will you act with radical empathy? Will you prioritize slowing down and spending time with family and friends? Will you find quiet moments of solitude for reflection? Will you continue routines of self-care which hold you in good stead in future times? Will you work for true inclusion of all people within the institutions where we work and live? Will you challenge systems of oppression? I already know that you're all going to work with integrity with the populations you serve. As you take your leave from academics at Sargent College, take leave of some of the things of the past year, but grab hold and take with you some of the most important life experiences, meaningful activities, and skills into your next stage. You did it. Congratulations, graduates. There have been many events in the last year that were categorized as unprecedented. In fact, it's likely to be a word that we'll never be able to use again after 2021. So I'll take my opportunity now to use it here one last time. It is now my distinct pleasure in an unprecedented event 
to introduce the three valedictorians of the Sargent class of 2021. Aspen Bombardo is receiving her Bachelor of Science in Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences. Aspen joined Boston University from Orlando, Florida. While at Sargent, she was a member of the National Student Speech, Language, and Hearing Association, Boston University After School, the Community Service Fraternity, Alpha Phi Omega, and BU's Dance Program. She was also a research intern and a newborn hearing screener at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. In the fall, Aspen will begin her clinical doctorate in audiology at Vanderbilt University. Riley Kurd is receiving her Bachelor of Science in Human Physiology. Riley came to Boston University from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Riley was part of the Sargent College Honor Society, worked at an oncology lab at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, and enjoyed spin class and traveling while a student at Boston University. Riley is still deciding on her future direction, but anticipates joining an MD or an MD-PhD program in the near future. Her passions lie in helping others in the sciences and in STEM-related knowledge. Surya Pulukuri was part of the dual degree program and is receiving his Bachelor of Arts in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, as well as his Bachelor of Science in Human Physiology. Surya joined Boston University from Sharon, Massachusetts and spent his time at BU as a chemistry learning assistant and an education researcher. He designed and taught the Orgo Prep summer program at BU, helping students get ready to succeed in organic chemistry. Surya plans to take a gap year before beginning medical school in the future. Now it's my great honor and privilege to introduce our 2021 convocation speaker, Executive Vice President of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Dr. Julie Morita. Dr. Morita oversees programming, policy, research, and communications activities at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. As the nation's largest private philanthropy dedicated solely to improving the nation's health, RWJF is focused on advancing health equity where everyone in America has a fair and just opportunity to live the healthiest life possible. Recently, Dr. Morita has served on several federal, state, and local COVID-19 advisory committees, including the Biden Transition COVID-19 Advisory Board. Previously, she helped lead the Chicago Department of Public Health for nearly two decades, first as the Immunization Program Medical Director, then as the Chief Medical Officer. In 2015, she was appointed Commissioner where she oversaw the public health needs of 2.7 million residents in the nation's third largest city. Dr. Morita began her medical career as a pediatrician in Tucson, Arizona, before moving into public health as an epidemic intelligence service officer at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, the CDC. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Morita. Thank you for your kind introduction, Dean Moore, and congratulations to the 2021 Sargent College graduates. It is truly an honor to be part of such a momentous and meaningful occasion. I realize that this ceremony looks quite different than what you imagined just a few years ago, and I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person. But it's important that we take a moment to celebrate just how far you've come and how far you will go. As students of Sargent College, you've been at the forefront and on the front lines of historic change. Over the past year, you faced a devastating pandemic that upended every aspect of our lives, but still you did it. You completed your classes, your requirements, and your degrees, despite terrifying and seemingly insurmountable challenges. And though you may have been exhausted, uncertain, or even scared at times, you kept going anyway. You demonstrated a level of courage that is typically reserved for superheroes. But even superheroes need sources of strength and support. And for that, I'd like to thank, take a moment to thank your parents, your families, friends, Sergeant faculty and staff, especially Dean Moore and the Dean's Advisory Board and the Clinical Education Coordinators for all they've done to help you arrive at this milestone. Learning from anywhere was possible because of their support. Before I continue, I'd also like to ask you to pause and to think about a person or people who helped you, encouraged you, and believed in you, even when you had doubts. This is their moment too. 
When I reflect on the resilience of the Sargent community, I feel a tremendous sense of hope. You've been unwavering in your commitment to serving and caring for others. And you've doubled down on dismantling the barriers that stand in the way of people's health, well-being, and full participation in our society. I'm truly heartened that the class of 2021 represents a generation of students focused on advancing health equity and racial justice. Because while this commencement may feel like an ending, it also ushers in a new beginning. You, the class of 2021, are stepping across the threshold from learning to leading. In fact, this is your moment to lead. As Albert Einstein once noted, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. The COVID crisis and the concomitant crises of economic turmoil and racial violence have laid bare the deeply rooted systemic barriers to health and opportunity across our nation. These crises have led to an awakening to racial, economic, and health inequities and the policies and the systems that perpetuate them. Because of this awakening, you have the opportunity to help our nation live up to its ideals of liberty and justice for all. You have the opportunity to help build a nation that where everyone has a fair shot at health and well-being. And you have the opportunity to use your knowledge and skills, not to get back to where we were before COVID, but to ignite action that takes us to where we want to be. There's never been a more important time to call on the superhero powers that you acquired at Sargent College, like knowledge based in science and the skills to collaborate across fields. The health of our communities, our economy, and our democracy depend on it and depend on you. With health equity as your North Star, you know the why behind your work, but what about the how? How do you translate the vision of health equity into action? I'd like to suggest three ways. First, as health professionals, you have the opportunity to lead by influencing health systems and policy change to ensure that all people in the United States have a fair and just opportunity to be as healthy as possible. The COVID-19 pandemic has revealed long-standing structural failures in our public policies. No one should have to choose between paying rent, putting food on the table, and protecting the health of themselves their families and their communities. There are millions of families in our country, particularly families of color, who are denied shelter, security, and access to opportunity. You have the opportunity to support transformational change that guarantees housing as a human right and a public good that advances racial and economic equity. Additionally, research indicates that an increase in minimum wages can have important health benefits and would impact the millions of families in America who have trouble affording food. Furthermore, nutritious, nutrition benefits have been proven to reduce poverty, bolster the economy, and improve children's health and educational attainment. And lastly, there are too many people in our country, particularly people of color in low wage jobs who don't have access to affordable and comprehensive health care. A large and growing body of research demonstrates the positive impact of health insurance coverage on health and mortality. In addition to acknowledging the need to address social determinants of health and advance racial equity, public health and healthcare systems need to assess how they are perpetuating inequities through their own racist and ableist systems and structures. I know that Sargent students are already doing important work to help remove barriers to people living with disabilities and to expand the participation of all people in our society. I hope you can, will continue to champion these kinds of meaningful practices and policies and to make the health case for investments in housing, nutrition, and wage supports so that everyone has a chance to thrive. Your voice has the power to make a difference. My second suggestion also involves using your voice because now is the time to call out racism and to work closely with communities to dismantle it. As Sargent students, you focused on recognizing and rectifying racial injustice. You've had access to extraordinary resources like the Boston University Center for Anti-Racist Research. 
Across the nation, more and more communities are declaring racism as a public health crisis. But if we don't follow up with action, it's an empty realization. Here's the thing, there isn't a one size fits all approach to advancing health equity and racial equity. Communities must generate their own solutions. And that's why it's critical to take action with communities and ensure the work is accountable to those who are experiencing structural racism. And as future health leaders, you have an opportunity and a responsibility to include communities in decision-making and to keep in mind that communication is a two-way street. That means we need to do as much listening as talking. This approach is working. Across the nation, public health agencies are working with communities of color to earn their trust in the COVID vaccine. And national survey data indicate a higher percentage of people in these communities want to get vaccinated. Here's my final suggestion for advancing health equity. As you communicate, lean into the science and also the stories. As health professionals, we understand the importance of research and evidence to drive our decisions. However, as we communicate to the public, we should lift up data and how it translates into the real world. Last year, I wrote an op-ed on racism and health for my hometown newspaper, the Chicago Tribune. I could have stuck to the data, but I shared a story that is deeply personal, my own personal why. I described my parents' experience as Japanese American children who endured the pain of internment during World War II. They and their extended families were uprooted from their homes and jobs in Washington and Oregon and transferred to a detention camp in Idaho. I grew up hearing stories about the unjust treatment that my family and thousands of others endured. I also learned about resilience and I saw the importance of speaking out against racism and discrimination as my parents had done. Because racism is not only bad for the nation's soul, research has shown it's also bad for the nation's health. My parents' experience was a key reason I chose a career in public health, including nearly two decades at the Chicago Department of Public Health, ultimately as commissioner. I now work at a foundation that advocates for everyone in America to have a fair and just opportunity for health and well being. At RWJF, the nation's largest foundation dedicated solely to health, we have made health equity our central aim. This includes a steadfast focus on racial justice. I also recently served on the Biden Transition COVID-19 Advisory Board. Our charge was to lead with science and to ground in equity. Advancing health equity has been a priority throughout my career, but I can't say that my path was clear or straight out of the gate. I started my career as a pediatrician. Step by step, I accepted opportunities as they emerged, some unexpectedly. As you embark on you, your future path, Consider embracing its twists and its turns. Sometimes your career chooses you. And I'd like you to know that each time I've been called to lead, I've felt some uncertainty. There's been self-doubt, anxiety, and fear. But with the encouragement and support of my family, my friends, and my coworkers, I moved forward and did my best. And this is exactly what you have done during your time at Sargent College. You've risen to unexpected and unimaginable challenges. You have de demonstrated the resilience, courage, and confidence of true leaders, or rather of superheroes. And you're graduating at just the right time because our nation needs you right now. It needs your caring, it needs your know-how, and it needs your action. I can't wait to see you out there putting everything you've learned to work because I know that pretty soon I'll be learning from you and I'm going to keep learning from you for years to come. Thank you for choosing to help humanity heal. Thank you for so, working so hard to achieve your goals and congratulations to each and every one of you. This is the time in our ceremony that our program directors would ordinarily read the names of the degree candidates from our programs and invite those students to cross the stage. While we can't be together to take part in that tradition this year, I encourage you to take a moment to find your marching orders slide on the screen. You can hear your name read and give yourself a hearty handshake.
Turning now to recognize some of our most distinguished students who were celebrated at an earlier ceremony. Sargent College has a long and proud tradition of student excellence. Our outstanding reputation as a leader in health and rehabilitation sciences is built on the foundation of our graduates. Each year, awards are given to some of our exceptional students who exemplify commitment, achievement, and caring, and thereby enhance the Sargent College community. I want to call your attention to the undergraduate student awards listed in the Sargent College online program on the Boston University commencement webpage, bu.edu forward slash commencement. We are also pleased to recognize our new Scarlet Key Society inductees. This honor is awarded to undergraduate students who have exhibited exceptional leadership during their years at Boston University. The Graduate Leadership Award recipients are also displayed on the Sargent program on the BU commencement page. This award is designed to honor graduate students who have demonstrated exemplary academic performance, clinical skills, and service to the clinical program. I would also like to take a moment to honor the leadership of our student organizations, our graduating dean's hosts, peer counselors, and the student government. And of course, most Sargent students in their commitment to making a difference have made extraordinary contributions to their communities at Sargent, BU, and Boston. Thanks to all of you for making this such a rewarding place to be. In closing, to all of our students, I'd like to say that we're tremendously proud of you. You've studied with world-class faculty who've helped you to develop the knowledge, character, and leadership skills you'll need to address our future challenges in healthcare. For the last year, you did this under the pressure and disruption of a global pandemic and still have reached this milestone just as planned. I would once again like to thank the entire faculty at Sargent College for the wonderful job they have done in preparing you for your future endeavors. I also want to acknowledge your family, your parents, and all of your supporters who have been so instrumental in helping you to complete this journey. We now celebrate your role in the Sargent family as alumni. Congratulations and continued success to all of you. Thank you for joining us. This concludes the 2021 Sargent College Convocation. Oh, glorious thy name and faith resplendent from thy youth. O oh, radiant thy holy flame that lights the lamp of truth. O oh, Boston University, O oh, alma mater dear, we'll cherish love and honor thee and thy great name revere. We'll cherish love and honor thee, and thy great name revere.